Welcome to the 10 Minute Treasure. My name is Jeff Pospisil and I love Excel and I really get excited when I learn something new about Excel. And the other day while I was at work, I ran into this function. It's the EO month function. And all it does is give you the last day of any month. So I just thought this was pretty brilliant and it makes me think, huh, I didn't have to memorize how many days are in each month and I always have to remember when a leap year is and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, this is a cool function. Let me go ahead and show it to you. All right, so here I am. I'm just in a regular Excel spreadsheet, just blank. And so here's what I used to do. If this was like a spreadsheet that um, I was only gonna use once, I was never gonna actually reuse from year to year, I would just plug it in do it really quick, drag it down. So this is a single use spreadsheet. So I don't need to really worry about, I'm not gonna save time by using formulas necessarily. So I'd have to then know the end of the month. So I know there's 31 days in January in 2024, there's actually 29 days in February. So you had to remember that kind of stuff. And then I go ahead and drag it down. So this is for a single use spreadsheet. That's as quick as you're gonna get. But if this ends up being a reusable spreadsheet, um, I'd like to use a formula. So I'm just going to highlight it. This would be the one box that I'd have people actually enter stuff in. I would just do something like this equals date and year would be year of the cell above it. Month would be month of this one plus one, and then I would do uh, day would be one, because I, it's always gonna be the first there. And then I can go ahead and just drag down this formula, and that fills it all the way in. And then I would be tempted to do something like this, where I just go equals this minus one, and that would give me the last to end of the month. And I could just go ahead and drag that down. Of course, I'm going to have a problem here because there's it's trying to refer to that. And so I just have an issue there. So what I might end up doing is, again, using this formula and pasting that here and saying minus 1. So what I'm just basically saying is uh, I, I'm just using the same formula. So it's it would normally return February 1st, but I'm subtracting one, so I'm getting right there. And now I can go ahead and drag this down. So then here's where you actually save time is in when you go to reuse it, you might say one, one, 25, and boom, it's all filled in there. One, one, 26, boom. So again, it just saved me, I don't know, seconds, maybe a minute, but still it, I save time and it's somewhat satisfying. So here's what I learned. It's the EO month function. So end of month function. So let's go back to 1124. And I'd probably still use this uh, formula, but I may not. Actually, let's go ahead and do, I'll show you the EO month one. So EO month. And what is my start date? Well, it's the first. And how many months do I want to go forward? I don't want to go forward any months. I just want the end of this current month, so I'm going to do zero. And now I could say for this one equals this minus one. And that all of a sudden became, oops, plus one. Plus one. Got used to saying the wrong one. So now you can see this formula is going to look a lot easier, a lot cleaner. And this one is too. No more of this kind of longer and complicated date function. And look how clean that is. So where might you use this? What I thought about is a lot of times people will use a timesheet. All right, so here I have just a regular timesheet. Normally what people might end up doing is they would go ahead and just change this manually. Um, so they might go, let's say we're getting ready for the next month. So 7 one 24 And then they would, some people would actually go ahead and type all this out that is not uncommon and so they might not even drag it down i like to drag stuff down um, but anyway it's very manual very uh time wasting and you might as well save a little bit of their thinking a little bit of their work energy for actual work rather than just a timesheet issue 
So what I normally like to do is again, highlight, I like to highlight the ones that they can change. So, um, and what I would do then is I would say equals if, I don't want them to have to change this. I don't want them to have to think of what the last day is. I don't want them to have to remember how many days are in August or September or February of 2024 or anything like that. So let's go ahead and do a function. So I'll say if, and I, what I want to say is if it's the first of the month for the first day, so I'm going to say day of this equals one, then I want to just say, go ahead and add 14 to this. And if it's not, I'm going to leave you blank. And so here you can see automatically that changes to, to perfect. So now when I go to the next month, that changes automatically. So, but what happens if you do the 16th? And one of the things I might do, by the way, is add some validation to this. So under data, there's a data validation. You can go ahead and make sure they only enter in a day that's either the 15th or the 16th, but I'm not gonna show that right now. So if it's this, instead of that blank that I have here, I'm gonna use that EO month function. So EO month, I'm gonna choose that date and I'm gonna say zero because I want the end of the month for the current month. And now all of a sudden they don't have to worry about knowing how many days are in any particular month as long as they enter this correctly. So there you have it, um, but they still have to, let's, we still need to fix this right here. So otherwise they're gonna still be manually recording this and they're still wasting some energy, some time on doing that. So I'm gonna say this first date right here equals my first day right here. And then I'll do equals that day above it plus one. And if I drag that on down, everything looks really good, right? Except for when you do something like this and all of a sudden it includes the 16th in there, or you include one like, let's just do a regular February. So I'm gonna go February 16th to 25, so that's not a leap year. So this one knows that the last date is the 28th, but this one just keeps going. And so what do you have to do here? So you're gonna to have to test to see if the, the date above it is the last day or not. So what I would do is I would say equals if this date here is equal to this date, and I'm gonna use my references to make sure that stays there. Um, then I want to make it blank. Otherwise I want it to be this plus one. And if I drag it down, that doesn't help me a whole lot, but it does fix a number of things. So now if I do go ahead and choose, um, let's just choose February 1st to 25. There, that looks really good. Um, any of the first looks good. Does uh, 9, 16, 24, that all looks good. I'm still having troubles with my February's though. 220, let me see, 216.24. That one looks almost good, but not quite. And uh, for sure, 216 to 25 does not look good at all either. So what I'm gonna have to do then is I'm gonna have to add another test for these two cells. So here where I sit, I'm testing if the one above it's the end date, I'm gonna have to say, is it blank or the end date? So I'm gonna use the or function. So I just included an or there. And I'm saying right here, does that one equal the end? Or does the one above it equal blank blank? And then I'm gonna close parentheses. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And now everything is nice and perfect. So, and now all people would have to do is enter their hours. So they change this and then they would enter their hours and you could have some conditional format, formatting. So if you wanted to highlight this, um, you can have this. So this part's always highlighted and then you could have some conditional formatting so that if 
this is not blank, then this turns yellow. You can do whatever you want, or they could just print this out. A lot of people just like to print it out after it's set. All right, that brings us to the end. And hopefully you enjoy learning something new as much as I do. And if you do, give me a like, give me a subscribe. Um, and I guess until next time, God bless you.